If you're a software engineer, you're probably using Jira, but are you using it most effectively for your team? There are a lot of different features in Jira, and I find the page I look at the most is the board. The board shows you what's in flight, what's blocked, what's to do, everything you need to know about the current status of the team and their work. The way this board is organized is key to your team's success. And mine has changed over time due to reorgs and switching teams. Not every board fits every team. So hi, I'm Catherine. I've been on a variety of teams, each using Jira with different board configurations. I'm gonna walk through three of them and tell you what worked, what didn't work, and how we made Jira effective for our team. Before we get started, a big shout out to Atlassian, the creators of Jira, for sponsoring this video. Creating software is impossible to do alone, but possible together. And almost every team I've worked on has used Jira to make it possible. So with that, let's get into it. The first team I worked on was a small backend team with five to six engineers, mostly mid-level with a tech lead. The priority was the status of the projects in flight. So let's take a look at the board. There are a few different flavors of Jira you can work in, but today I'll be working in Jira software. If you're using a different version of Jira, such as Jira service management or Jira work management, it may look a little different. Our team is working on two epics, one to build a currency converter feature, and another to add localization to the app. They each have user stories, and the board allows us to track the status of each one. Let's walk through the board. The status of each item is key. So our workflow takes things from to do, to in progress, then code review, then it gets merged into the code base, deployed to staging, and then eventually deployed to production, where it's done. We can also configure our board more specifically. We'll click the three dots up here and click configure board. Here, we can map each status to a given column. In this case, it's a one-to-one -one mapping where we have to do, in progress, code review, and the status matches the column name we have. Another thing we can do is manage the workflow. This is where you configure the transitions from one status into another. For example, we can make it so that only things that are merged can go into the staging status. So we'll create a transition that transitions from merged to staging. We'll call it deploy to staging. And we can link it from merged to staging. Then we'll delete the any status transition so only things that are merged can go into staging. We'll update our workflow and we'll apply it to all types of issues. Let's go back to our board and let's try to merge something and then deploy it. We'll deploy to staging, which allows it to go into staging. Now, if I try to take something that's in progress and try to move it to staging, I'll get an error. You can't do it because of the workflow configuration we just configured. Now let's talk more about this board. On this team, we had epics, which contained the user stories for each project. Let's take a look at one. These are all the user stories associated with this epic or this project. The currency converter feature is our epic, and there are individual things that need to be done in order to complete the epic. We need to create the Lambda infrastructure, create a GitHub repo to store our code. That's already done. We need to add the conversion logic. It's all accessible here right from our board. Another thing we've done here is we've organized it by epic. We can easily see what's in flight for a given project. There's a lot of stuff we need to do. We've already created the GitHub repo and we just deployed our Lambda infrastructure to staging. To view the other epic, we close this and we can see what's going on with the other project. Now there are other ways to group things on your board. I'm grouping by epic because I find it's the easiest way to see a project status. But you could also group by subtask or assignee or just have all of your tickets up on the board. So this board worked for a while, but then we had a reorg and we had to rethink our processes. 
they combined our team with another backend team, so now we had 10 engineers. The status of the projects in flight was still important, but with so many more engineers, it became more important to know what each person was working on and if they had bandwidth. The main difference is we started using filters for each person. This let us filter the board and see what each person was working on. Let's filter it by me, Blondie Bites. Here, we can see what I have in progress, what I have up for review, what's in staging, what have I done? And we can see it across the different projects. For me, this was super useful. I could just filter by my stories and easily move them and update their status. We also used this as a team during our daily scrum. Someone would screen share the board and we'd filter by each person asking for updates. It is a little micromanagey to do that, but it does help you see who may need support on the team and who has bandwidth to pick stuff up. On a large engineering team, it can be easy to fade into the background and be less involved. So this filtering forces each person to be more present. If you're on a smaller team, using this feature is not as necessary. There are less silos and likely each person is working with other people on the same initiatives. And then six months later, guess what happens? Reorg. This time around, instead of all the backend engineers on one team, we would have feature teams that would deliver features. The feature team consisted of some backend engineers, some frontend engineers, some QA. So still a big team, but now everyone's working on different code bases and often on different things. How do you manage that in a workflow? Well, the goal with this new combined team was to work through and understand the interdependencies of a feature rather than just one part of the stack. A lot of times it'll be backend saying, I did my part. I made the API and it's ready. And then the web team, the iOS team, the Android team, they won't integrate for another six months. Then they integrate and at that point, backend has moved on to the next big thing and they don't have the time or bandwidth to support the integration. Our business wanted us to focus on delivering things end to end because after all, that's how the user will experience it not in these piecemeal components. To do that, we're still using Jira, but now we have front-end, QA, and back-end stories all on one board. Let's take a look. Given you have everything a feature needs on one board, there's gonna be a lot more stories. You can see what iOS is working on, what Android's working on, what back-end is working on. So it encourages a lot more collaboration in planning and development. In our epics, we also had backend, frontend, and QA stories. So you get the full picture of the feature. Back on our main board, we added labels. We label things as backend, iOS, Android, and we can use the label filter to filter for those different things. So I can see iOS, what's going on with iOS for each of my projects. What about backend? What are all the things we need to do with backend and what are their status? For this version of Jira, a lot of this is built in, but you can also add custom filters to filter your board for exactly what you need. So if I click on the three dots and manage custom filters, I can create a filter called iOS and filter for only the label where it's iOS. We can create it and then we can filter for it. This happens to do the same thing as my label filter, but there are a lot of things you can do with custom filters. If you click this question mark, you can see all the different things you can search for and how to use this JQL or how to search for your stories. Now thinking of our features in this way requires a lot more brain capacity. It's not just this small component you're working on, 
but rather it's a small component within a full feature set. It was definitely hard to get used to at first because I would tune out front end and QA and their updates, but it allows your team to focus on full features rather than components that may or may not get integrated with. Just because you build something doesn't mean it'll get released. So this format prioritized outputting end-to-end -end features and providing a focus for our team. All right, that's it for this video. Out of these three teams, which team would you wanna work on? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Atlassian for sponsoring. If you wanna see more content from me, be sure to subscribe to the Blondie Bites YouTube channel, as well as this channel for more tips and tricks on how to use Jira. I'll see you next time and happy coding.